Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I finally have the steel that I needed to start welding up the Mahler chassis. So I've started, I've got the jig out here that I used for the ratchet chassis. What I'm going to do to keep this video fun and exciting is I'm just going to cut to me, uh, you know, notching, cutting, grinding, fitting up some of the pieces for the build platform here. But after I get through a little bit of that, then I'm going to come back to the camera and I'm going to explain to you guys uh, basically what I'm doing and why I'm doing it for this build. All right, now you just saw me cut and grind this piece. And let me let you in on a little secret. I cut that, you saw me cut that, and then I think I just came back and it fit perfectly. That's not how it happened in real life. I think I had to go back outside to the grinder like six times to keep trimming that in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit each time so that I can get a nice fit. I'm trying to make this chassis really, really nice, so I'm cleaning up the edges and I'm getting the miters as close as I can. I'm still putting tick marks on here. I always have to have tick marks, but if you can see, I'm holding them back like a quarter inch so that when I weld that, the uh, hopefully the inclusions from the magic marker don't get in there. But either way, I was a little bit more anal on that one because that was the last miter for the perimeter of the chassis. And if you're a little bit shy on some of the other miters, you can actually make up for it because you keep bringing pieces in and stacking it. So you, as you're working your way, and I always, on this chassis, because this chassis is kind of like an arrow, it's widest right here, and then it gets more and more narrow as it comes in. 
So I always start with this back bar and then work my way forward. That's easier. Um, but by the time you get to the last miter, you've got to be right on. There's no room for error on that one. So I was a little neurotic with that one. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm getting ready to weld it up, but I'm going to cut this piece first. You can see I've got this crossbar in there, and there's supposed to be a crossbar right here, and there's going to be another crossbar right here, but these crossbars are landing right on a miter, and I want to be able to weld this miter all the way around before I put that crossbar on there. However, this crossbar doesn't land on a miter, so I can go ahead and weld that one up. So what I'm going to do now is cut that piece, and then I can run around and tack everything. Okay, now I think I'm ready to start welding. I've got the back piece, I've got all the perimeter pieces, I've got this crossbar because it doesn't inter inter interfere with any of the miters, and then same thing with this piece. And I think what I'm going to do now is just go to each miter joint and I'm going to tack it three times, once on the top and once on each side. I think I'll run around and I'll do all of those. And then I think while I still have it in the jig, I'll weld probably a third, maybe a little bit more over the top. I'll do that to each and every joint on here. Then I'll pop off all of my clamps that are holding things in place here. And then at that point, I'll be able to roll it upside down and then finish the rest of the welds.
Okay, whew, boy. I'll tell you, that's a, that's a good day's work right there. That's a solid day, that's a lot of welding. I didn't, I didn't film, I probably only filmed 20% of that welding just because I don't have the battery to be filming all of that. But that, uh, that came out really good. Really happy with uh, the way those TIG welds came out. I think those are gonna be good and strong. So as you saw, I tacked it and then stitch welded Probably, I think I got about 50%. Then I took it and I flipped it upside down. And this jig is symmetrical, so you can you can flip it one way or the other. When I laid this out, I was I was super duper precise with all the angles, so they're the same. So as you saw, you can flip it, and then you can have it in the jig while I welded the back side of everything. And then when I was done, I do want to build it from the top the entire time, so I flipped it back. So now this is the top, so that when I cut the rest of the pieces, it's facing the same way it was initially. I don't remember if I said this at the beginning of the video or not, but when I, builded, when I built the ratchet chassis, I tacked everything um, all the way up until I had it a rolling chassis. Then I took it all back apart and welded everything solid. And that was really, that was a big pain in the butt to get to all those welds when it was a complete chassis. Really the only reason I did that was because that chassis was really kind of experimental. It was the first ratchet chassis I was building. And there was a couple times where I did something, actually there was, there was a lot of times. As a matter of fact, the whole top, because remember, originally I built that with a flat top. Um, so a couple times in the build I decided I wanted to stop take a couple of steps back and redo some things. And being that it was just tacked together, that was real easy. Just beep, blip through your tacks and you can take the pieces off and start over. This chassis is not like that. I've built the ratchet chassis now. I have a pretty good idea of what this is going to be. So this one, as I'm building it, I'm going to be solid welding everything so that I don't find myself at the end where I now need to weld up everything these welds would not have been this good if I had to do this with the chassis upright and all sorts of poles around here. So if I can get to as many welds as I can before the chassis gets too congested, that will get me a better finished product. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that on this chassis and on this chassis, on Ratchet's chassis, most of his, probably 80% of his is MIG welded on the Mahler chassis, I'm going to try to TIG as much as I can just because the TIG is cleaner and it's a little bit better. MIG is really good and I'm not worried that I MIG welded Ratchet, but I can do a better job if I TIG it. So I'm going to try to TIG most of this chassis. I'll put a link in the description of this video with the files for this chassis if you're interested. It'll just be a link to my shared folder and then in the shared folder I've got all the files for this. And I think after I get the remaining supports put in here the next thing I need to do is I need to set the engine and transaxle in the back so that I can get the pieces that run off the back of the chassis welded in place and then I need to weld the front on. The front's actually going to be really easy because I cut the front clip off of the old chassis. I actually really liked the front end. Um, so this is all set up. So when I do the front end, I'm just going to need to put it on here, check a couple of dimensions, and then I should be able to start welding it in place. I'll need to customize the pieces that integrate that front end into this chassis because this chassis is going to be a little bit different than the ratchet chassis, but that won't be too difficult. But definitely the next, the next, the next big step is going to be to get the engine and transaxle assembled and then in the right position. So that's probably what the next video will be. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, finally starting to rock and roll on this chassis, which is actually pretty excited. I'm actually pretty stoked because I think, I think this is gonna come out really, really nice. I think when I'm done with Mahler here, he's actually gonna be a really nice, uh, let's call it a, a street slash trail Baja. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked for this build. So thanks for watching the video. I hope it's helping you guys with whatever you might be working on or just giving you some entertainment. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.